All right, this is WABYA. I'm back again with the Sigdalent uh, Spectrum Analyzer. And there was something that was really bothering me when I made the first video about the tracking generator use. I noticed that there was a discrepancy in the insertion loss of the big Frankenstein filter <laughs> that I call um, that guy right there. And um, I thought, you know, that really shouldn't happen. And I attribute that to my ignorance of the instrument, not reading the manual and not knowing how to use it. There was a difference in the insertion loss uh, at two different times. And I found out the reason for that. Um, what I did was I changed the frequency span of the instrument and I didn't um, shoot a new reference uh, for the tracking generator level. Um, don't forget that tracking generator output is, think of it as a RF uh, signal generator and it puts out um, a zero dBm signal in that case. And um, I went ahead and normalized it but it was over a, a very wide frequency range when I went back and uh, changed the frequency uh, span of the instrument, I really should have uh, renormalized that tracking generator. So that's why there's a difference uh, between the two. So what I'm going to do here, <clears throat> um, not only to show you that uh, uh, the instrument is capable of really, really accurate measurements of the filter. I was real also bothered by the fact that it was showing, you know, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 dB of insertion loss, which I know wasn't right. Um, the filter probably would have burnt up uh, uh, if I was dissipating uh, that much uh, wattage inside. If, if it had 0 0.5 dB loss at a kilowatt, uh, those components uh, would probably be uh, melting. So what I'm going to do real quick I want to show you why it's so neat to have a tracking generator uh, on the spectrum analyzer um, which kind of the first video did and I'm going to show you how you would do it if you didn't have the tracking generator the trouble that you'd have to go through and to do that I'm going to use um, one of my uh, older uh, uh, HP uh, signal generators. In this case it's an 8662. Uh, it's, a, it's an oldie but a goodie. And I'll see if we can get that in focus. There we go. So what I've done is I've uh, set it up for 50.2 uh, meg. Uh, amplitude level is uh, minus 10 dBm and it's just putting out a, uh, uh, a CW signal and its output is uh, on that uh, brown wire that's uh, coming out there from behind the unit, uh, some RG142. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that signal generator to go into the input of the, uh, of the filter, and then I'm going to, uh, uh, to measure the insertion loss uh, using the spectrum analyzer. We're, we're gonna uh, take a measurement uh, going through the filter and then we're going to take a measurement bypassing the filter and the difference between those two is going to be the insertion loss of uh, that filter at that one frequency. Uh, keep in mind this is at only one frequency. Um, if, if I was curious to know what the insertion loss was at other frequencies I'd have to manually uh, change that frequency each and every time and run these tests which is a real uh, pain in the butt so um, that's why having the tracking generator um, in the spectrum analyzer and that does the sweep for you uh, is really advantageous I mean it's it's really the way to do it and with the low price of the tracking generator it's really a no-brainer so let me, uh, that's going to be the setup here. 
where I'm first going to do the insertion loss using the old-fashioned method uh, signal generator um, going through the filter and, and then uh, bypassing the filter we'll get a level and then we'll go ahead and rerun the test using the uh, the Siglent uh, Specan with a tracking generator. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this off, get things set up, and then uh, we'll get started. There is one thing that I did want to mention that I forgot to do uh, earlier, so I'm going to inject this uh, short little clip uh, right in the middle. Um, I kind of mentioned that it would be a real real pain in the butt to use an old instrument like this uh, HP uh, signal generator to um, to figure out the insertion loss at different frequencies and for example if I were to use that instrument above uh, which is a real nice generator it's an 8657B. It goes from uh, real low frequencies up to a couple of gig. But it's just one frequency uh, basically at a time. I can modulate that uh, carrier uh, different ways and um, change its frequency and amplitude every which way, but um, it's uh, restricted as far as any sweeping capabilities. Um, that's kind of the reason I've got um, this uh, older generator right here um, this uh, 8662 actually has a sweeping capability and you can see that uh, here on the uh, on the left side and maybe it'll be worth it uh, in another video to show how that can be used um, if you do not have a tracking generator on your spec can um, what we can do is we can set up that signal generator to sweep from one frequency to another and what we do is we put that signal into something like our filter there and we make what's called a, a poor man's tracking generator. We set up the um, the spec can, we put it in a max hold mode, and we let the, uh, the signal generator sweep back and forth over the range, uh, the st start and stop frequencies that we've defined. And by setting the uh, spec can in a max hold mode, um, we can actually paint a picture we can get a profile of what the frequency response of something like a filter is. It's not real convenient and if you want real accurate measurements you have to uh, perform um, uh, some math on the spec end to, uh, to do the normalization for you. Um, it's not really convenient and it's not as accurate but there are ways of doing it. So. I just wanted to be 100% clear on that. Um, if you don't have a tracking generator and you do have sweeping capability on your signal generator, you can you can get close to doing what we're doing here. But believe me, this is a far far superior uh, way of doing it. Um, what we're showing here using the tracking generator. So I'll go ahead and stick this. Uh, in the middle of the video that uh, I'm making here, but I just uh, wanted to uh, to point that out. All right, so what I've done here is uh, set up the uh, the spec in um, this time a little bit uh, different. Um, I'm using an old DSLR here, so you'll have to forgive the uh, the video quality. But what I've done is um, this time I've set up the y-axis. Uh, in 1 dB uh, per division increments it'll be a lot easier to see what's going on. Um, this is the trace from the HP signal generator. Um, I set it for uh, our test frequency of 50.2 meg and I asked it to find the peak, put it in the center and it's uh, 
showing up as uh, minus uh, 10.38 uh, dBm. I went ahead and hit view uh, to go ahead and freeze that frame. And um, uh, that signal, by the way, like I said, coming out of the, the SIG Gen, we're just going through a bullet connector. I've switched over to BNC connectors, by the way, a lot uh, easier to uh, connect and disconnect than the end connectors. So what we're going to do now is uh, go ahead and disconnect the, the bullet and uh, we'll go ahead and this time we'll go through the, um, um, the low pass filter and uh, we'll show you uh, what you got to do here. So what we want to do is um, want to go ahead and select a, uh, a different trace so we're going to go ahead and select uh, trace B we'll go ahead and hit uh, view and there you go you can see uh, trace B is the purple one now and it's uh, superimposed uh, over the first one but actually it's just a ever so slight touch lower and um, that's the the actual insertion loss. The difference between the yellow trace and the purple one is the insertion loss of our filter. So let's see if I can figure out how to do this. We'll go ahead and hit uh, marker. We'll hit um, uh, select uh, marker number two. Um, we'll select uh, trace uh, B here we go now we'll go ahead and hit uh, a Delta um, we've got a Delta marker set up now and we'll go ahead and do uh, uh, relative to and we'll select uh, number one and then um, We'll select uh, trace A, and there you go. So the difference between these two traces is actually 0.12 dB. That's the actual insertion loss. Um, I'm very, very confident that's uh, pretty close to the real insertion loss of this filter. So now that's using it the old-fashioned way. Now, mind you, if if you were curious to know what the insertion loss was at other frequencies. You'd have to do this at every single frequency and make a note of what these are. That'd be a real pain in the butt. So, um, um, you know, it can be done, but that's why having the tracking generator to do this for you over a wide range of frequencies within a split second is, uh, is such a neat feature. And for the low cost of that uh, that option, it's it's really a no-brainer. You you have to have it. So that's how you do it the old-fashioned way. Let me go ahead and uh, set up the spec yan now, and I'll uh, I'll show you how to do it the real way, uh, accurate way. Um, unlike what I did in my first video, where I uh, should have renormalized the uh, the tracking generator output. Okay, so what I've done now is I've got the tracking generator output uh, going directly through a bullet connector BNC bullet going into another short piece of coax that's going directly into the spec -yan input and what we're going to do is go ahead and enable the tracking generator just like we did in the first video we'll go ahead and turn it on and you can see there's the tracking generator output and already it looks pretty impressive it looks pretty flat but we're going to go ahead and normalize it just like that and now it's a perfectly flat uh, display so we'll go ahead and hit a marker and I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect the bullet and in place of the bullet we're going to go through the, uh, the low pass filter and voila, there you go. We're showing 0.13 to 0.14 uh, dB of insertion loss going through the filter. And that's exactly what we had when we were using the HP um, signal generator. So 
I just wanted to show the um, that difference that you saw in that first video was not the fault of the instrument that was due to my ignorance of not knowing how to use the instrument and if you set it up uh, using it the, uh, the old-fashioned way with HP uh, generators and and so forth um, uh, you can do it but it'll take an awfully long time you know to collect uh, a number of data points and um, that that can be a real uh, a real pain so just want to show you the old school way of doing it and the fancy new way with the uh, the built-in tracking generator deadly accurate and uh, super super fast so I'll see if I can uh, get this posted and uh, uh, keep working on some new uh, new cool videos I'm absolutely in love with uh, with my new uh, Siglent uh, spec in here I think next uh, what I'm going to do is um, uh, work on the um, frequency response and gain of a broadband low noise preamplifier that's built uh, by a good friend of mine uh, uh, Pete uh, WA2ODO he makes the best uh, preamplifiers in the world in my opinion so we'll go ahead and see if we can characterize one of those uh, for the next video so this is WA2BYA we're signing off and clear 73